This is a revision video about the role of hormones in the human reproductive system. This comes up in the homeostasis and response unit of AQA GCC biology and combined science. By the end of this video, you should be able to state the location of three glands required for human reproduction, describe where each of FSH, LH, estrogen and progesterone are made, and describe the action of these hormones and how they interact to bring about the menstrual cycle. The endocrine system secretes hormones into the blood. These hormones are chemical messengers made from protein that each affect a specific target organ or tissue. The endocrine system works more slowly than the nervous system, but its effects last for longer, so it's perfectly placed to control things like sexual maturity, the menstrual cycle and pregnancy. There are three endocrine glands without which it wouldn't be possible for humans to reproduce. You need to know the location of each of these. The pituitary gland is found in the brain, just behind the bridge of the nose. The ovaries sit in the lower abdomen on either side of the uterus, also known as the womb, and connected up to it by the oviducts or fallopian tubes. And then the testes sit in the scrotum outside of the body below the penis. During puberty, you start to develop secondary sexual characteristics as a result of the action of reproductive hormones. Your primary sexual characteristics are whether you have a penis or a vagina, whereas secondary sexual characteristics are things like developing breasts, starting menstruating, growing body hair, or your voice changing. In males, the main reproductive hormone responsible for these changes is testosterone, and this is produced by the testes and it stimulates sperm production. In females, most of the secondary sexual characteristics are caused by oestrogen, which is produced in the ovary. When girls reach puberty, the eggs in their ovaries begin to mature, and each month one of these is going to be released as part of the menstrual cycle, in a process called ovulation. Although oestrogen is responsible for the development of the secondary sexual characteristics, there are actually four female reproductive hormones that you need to be able to describe the interaction of, and these together are going to bring about the menstrual cycle. The first of these hormones is follicle stimulating hormone, or FSH for short, and this is responsible for an egg becoming mature so that it's ready to be released. It might help you to remember this if you know that the follicle is the little sac that the egg is sat in, so when it's stimulated by FSH, this causes the egg to mature. FSH is produced by the pituitary gland in the brain. Another one of FSH's jobs is that it stimulates the production of oestrogen, which is the second hormone. And what oestrogen does is it causes the lining of the uterus to build up, so that if an egg is fertilised, it has a suitable surface to become implanted in. Oestrogen is produced in the ovaries. After the surge of oestrogen, we see a surge of the next hormone called LH, or luteinizing hormone. And what luteinizing hormone does is it triggers ovulation. This means that the mature egg is released from the follicle and able to travel down the fallopian tube in the hope of being fertilised. Luteinizing hormone is also produced in the pituitary gland. The final hormone is called progesterone, and progesterone is responsible for maintaining the lining of the uterus. If a fertilised egg does implant in the wall of the uterus, then the body will carry on producing progesterone for the length of the pregnancy, so that the uterus lining remains intact. But if no fertilised egg implants, then progesterone levels will drop and menstruation will occur. Progesterone is also produced in the ovaries. So you've got two hormones produced in the pituitary gland and two produced in the ovaries to remember. If you're taking the higher tier, then in addition to stating the function of each of these hormones, you need to be able to describe how they interact with each other. At the start of the menstrual cycle, during menstruation, there's a small peak in follicle stimulating hormone, and this small peak causes oestrogen to be produced. So we would say that FSH promotes the production of oestrogen. Oestrogen does two things. Firstly, it stops any more FSH from being produced. We say that it inhibits FSH production. This is important because if it didn't happen, then more than one egg would mature at once. The second thing that oestrogen does is it promotes the production of LH, so it makes more LH be produced. And this is important because otherwise ovulation wouldn't happen. Luteinizing hormone promotes the production of progesterone. And then finally, as the progesterone is released from the empty follicle following ovulation, this inhibits both follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, causing the cycle to come to an end. Hopefully you're now more confident explaining the role of hormones in human reproduction. Thank you very much for watching and if you did find this video useful don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC biology videos coming soon.